So today uh, we will talk about a more realistic case in the previous videos we have seen if rectifier is connected to a, a large inductance load or if it can be modeled as an ideal current source we have seen it draws like a square waveform current but what happens if we have a DC side voltage I mean this DC side voltage can be you know of course it, it shouldn't be like an active load here but you can think that one as a, I don't know a DC motor or even it can be like a large capacitor so for example it can be a large capacitor and you can still have the resistive load here if that RC time constant of that RC is much larger than the period of your frequency basically the change in the VD voltage will be small and you can you know simplify that thing as if it is a voltage source so at first let's ignore that inductance and uh, try to think what will happen if we have a positive voltage here obviously let's say that voltage is like 100 volts so if our grid voltage is positive in the previous case whenever it is positive it just starts flowing uh, through that d1 and d2 okay but in that case if our grid voltage is 10 volts so you don't have enough voltage to forward bias your diodes if it is 20 volts then it will still have no current so is will be zero until it reaches that voltage if our voltage reaches 100 volts assuming those diodes are ideal in this case then after that case you will have uh, those diodes starts conducting and you will have some currents so if you think about I will show you the detailed ones but if you think about the IS and of course if you don't have any inductance you know that is one of the rules about the uh, two voltage sources so you don't connect two voltage sources in parallel if this is like 90 volts if this is 100 volts and if this everything is ideal then the current will be infinite so of course you know in reality we don't have that kind of cases we have the inductances and resistances in parallel but of course you know in this case when we ignore that inductance you may ask what will be the current waveform but if we have some inductance and resistance the important thing is our current will not be if this is our let's say voltage then our current will not be like a fundamental current like that the current will be zero but it will have you know some peaks like that and how we can estimate the shape of that waveform so in order to do that let's uh, get into more realistic case so here you now it is the same circuit now I don't ignore I don't ignore the inductance I have the inductance to limit the current and I have my VD voltage and I have my Vs as the input uh, voltage but remember that voltage is the RMS voltage in all our derivations so now as you can see I just start from time is equal to zero and this is my VD voltage level this is my VD voltage level so as long as our input voltage is smaller than our VD I don't have any current here this is my current this is oops, sorry uh, this is our current drawn either from the source or the load side so if our input voltage is smaller than the VD voltage then I don't have any current I will give out the exact shape but whenever my VS gets larger than VD then I have my inductor is charging up remember so here I don't have anything uh, this is ideal voltage source there is ideal voltage source so I have just an inductor connecting these two and diodes can be assumed as ideal so now whenever there is a voltage difference between here Vs minus Vd will be L Di over Dt so the derivative of the current will give us the voltage difference so that is why whenever there is a positive voltage drop okay and you can see vl here let me write it here vl is equal to vs minus vd in real time so whenever i have some positive voltage i have the current 
of the inductor charging up so it will charge you know small at first and it will charge up faster the derivative gets larger at that point so you have the largest derivative at that point then it will get slower but it will still increasing until that point so that point is critical at that point uh, you have vs is equal to vd again and that means if we write it again l di over dt if these two are equal that will give zero volts and that means the derivative will be zero so it reaches its maximum value but then even you know even if our vs is now smaller than vd what are diodes what our diodes are looking at not the vs voltage but vs you know plus the inductor voltage so they are just looking the voltage difference at that point and that point which is here is vd but that point is not equal to vs if the current is changing because there will be some voltage drop on the inductor so that is why our current and hence the diodes will be in conduction but now our difference is negative so here you can see it area a is the vl and area b again is vl but now it is negative so that implies in that region so vd is again larger than vs so now current starts going down okay going down and at some point at some point it will reach down to zero currents then at that point our diodes diodes are off okay so then you still wait for the next cycle and the next cycle now the other two sets of the diodes gets into the conduction and we have again the same cycle whenever you have larger than uh, vd our inductor current is increasing but once it reached to a, a finite value then it will start get into conduction and you can say you know from again we talk about that in the early weeks okay that area and that area has to be equal to each other so area a should be equal to b so in that case i can say my inductor current start at one point and it finished at the other point so it is like you know steady state you can take the integral and you can calculate that one but for example again i'm not really interested in the numeric calculations about derivations of those numbers so don't get confused but it is important to you know get the method to calculate about how the beginning this is the theta b beginning point theta p peak point and theta f is the final point okay so let me uh, clean up those things a little bit so i advise you to calculate these things yourself how can i find uh, theta b so theta b okay is the point where uh, basically our voltage vs voltage is equal to vd and remember that one is you know rms value so th theta b is where vd is equal to square root 2 vs uh, sine theta b i know that value i know that value so i can calculate theta b okay then what about theta p okay what about the peak value so if let's say if this is zero and let's think about angles uh, just to make it easier let's say this is 30 degrees okay 30 degrees is the point where uh, vs is equal to vd i have two points satisfying that condition i have two points in a sign if you just draw a horizontal line you have two points that are crossing and if this is 30 point uh, sorry 30 degrees okay this should be you know from symmetry you can just draw a symmetry line and that thing will be equal to other thing so that will be 130 degrees so in other words from symmetry theta p is equal to p minus 
theta b. So just using this equation, I can calculate the starting point at the peak point of my current, and that depends on the um, value of my vd. If my vd gets smaller, the current will take longer time. If there is just, uh, let me draw it from a red line. If I just have a, you know, higher and higher VD voltage, I have more spiky input current, so the THD uh, gets worse. But how how can you actually calculate the either the value of that peak, and how can you calculate the final value? So let's uh, talk about those things. So let me clean those parts again. Okay. Let me take more out of the screen. So now I can say uh, inductor current, okay, inductor current uh, is equal to VL is equal to LS, which is the inductance DI over DT or ID over IT. And what is that value? What is inductor voltage is Vs at that node and Vd at the other node. So I can write that one as Vs minus Vd and the instantaneous value of the Vs voltage is square root RMS value of Vs times sine omega t minus Vd. All right. So then I can do the same trick. I will integrate I will integrate both parts, both sides. Okay. So you will have again the same problem. Yes, you can do the I mean from the earlier weeks some of you asked about that thing is integral square root two Vs sine omega t minus V D. Right? You can take dt here, but basically this is uh, omega t, and we have dt here. So what you can write is, yes, you can convert it to the omega t, and you need to divide it by omega, and omega comes to here. So our equation uh, becomes, let me write it here, our equation becomes omega ls, okay, ls is constant, integral di, uh, and that one is equal integral square root uh, Vs uh, sine omega t minus Vd d omega t. Okay, and our you know you can uh, write your uh, calculations like from it is from I want to calculate the peak value for uh, or any value but it is starting from uh, b to theta and this is again b to theta right so let me clean that part a little bit sorry i have quite a limited area so if you just rewrite that one you can basically write i as a function of theta which is you know id if you are confused and it is 1 over omega ls and this is theta b to theta it is square root 2 vs uh, sine omega t minus vd t omega t right so if you have that equation if you have that equation let me continue here uh, you can you know it just gives you the characteristics of i theta so you can get all the functions of i as a function of theta so what i know is at theta zero uh, theta final i know my current is equal to zero so i can write zero is equal to theta b to theta f square root two vs sine omega t minus v d uh, d omega t so this is the same thing okay this is the same thing as 
saying i mean i just want to prove it mat mat mathematically so that's the same thing as from here to here if you integrate the voltage which is equal to this is equal to vl okay that is equal to zero so i mean from if you just understood the inductor current balance you can you can calculate that one and what about the average id voltage so id average id average okay that is the theta b to theta f uh, id theta d theta okay so what will be our average voltage divided by what p so average voltage is how can i represent that current waveform with an id average so all that area under the dc current will be equal to the area under that area so basically i'm calculating the area under id curve and i'm dividing over p to calculate the average voltage so again as i said you know i'm not really interested in uh, defining an uh, electrical uh, expression to calculate those exact values but i'm trying to uh, show you some uh, applications of the inductor voltage bounds okay and actually you can again there's also some uh, definitions in rectifiers like the short circuit current so i short circuit current that depends on the inductance value short circuit is what happens okay what happens if you make vd is equal to zero if vd is equal to zero you will find the average voltage and of course I clean that part again so if your vd is equal to zero so that means you will start conducting some current directly from here okay then you will reach the maximum value at that point okay so it will you know keep increasing and it will reach some maximum current here and you can basically calculate the average current and you know i don't want to get into the every detail but you can find the derivation in the mohan if you are interested so short circuit current is a function of uh, let me get rid of the j omega ls okay so you can derive it yourself so vs divided by omega ls so as either inductance gets smaller you will have a larger uh, current and you can expect it because the value of the inductance is the thing that is uh, limiting your uh, short circuit current okay so you have i mean that is the uh, theta b to theta f uh, you can calculate again you know calculating it numerically is not practical and that is why in your uh, simulation assignments you will calculate it with non-ideal cases and short circuit current is basically vs divided by omega ls by definition